If you're having problems with blue screen errors, then it's a good idea to configure Windows to create a crash dump file. A crash dump file is essentially a copy of the machine's memory, and you can go through this file a little bit later on and then figure out what it was that caused the blue screen error to occur in the first place. Now, Windows will create a crash dump file by default, even if you don't do anything at all, but it's a good idea to go in and fine-tune some of the options that are associated with creating a crash dump file, so that you can make sure that it meets your needs. So let's take a look at how that's done. To get started, I'm going to right-click on the Start button. And then I'm going to go to System. And then I'm going to click on Advanced System Settings. So this brings up the System Properties sheet. And then what you want to do from here is make sure that the Advanced tab is selected, which it is, and then locate the Startup and Recovery section on that tab, and then click Settings. Now you'll notice that we have a section right here next to my mouse pointer called System Failure, and the settings that are within this section control what happens when a blue screen error occurs. And so the first option that we have is write an event to the system log. So this option should be selected because what happens is when a blue screen error occurs, then an event is going to be written to the system log so that you can open that log up in Event Viewer and see that a blue screen error has indeed occurred. The second option is automatically restart. I recommend deselecting this option if you're serious about trying to get to the root cause of the blue screen error. And the reason for that is that if the system automatically restarts, it may restart before you have a chance to write down the specifics of the error. So I like to go ahead and clear this out just so that I can have the error on screen for as long as I need it and I don't have to worry about the system rebooting on me. Because being able to write down the contents of a blue screen error is one thing if you're expecting the error. But if the error happens totally unexpectedly, you might not be prepared to do that. So preventing an automatic restart just gives you the time that you need to be able to document the error. The next thing that we have is write debugging information, and you can see that this is set for an automatic memory dump. But we have a few other options. You can see that we have an option of none, which prevents a memory dump from being written at all. Then we have a small memory dump, which is essentially just a small memory summary and it's only 256 kilobytes in size. But a lot of times that small memory dump will give you the information that you need. Then we have a few other options, kernel memory dump, complete memory dump, automatic memory dump, and active memory dump. Now the important thing that you need to know about this is that if you do a complete memory dump, then the file that's going to be created is going to be equal to the amount of memory that you've got installed in your system. Oh. If, for example, your system has 120 gigabytes of RAM, well then your crash dump file is also going to be 128 gigabytes if you select the complete memory dump option. Now, kernel memory dump, automatic memory dump, and active memory dump can create files that are as large as the system's memory, but depending on what's going on on the system at the time of the crash, these files do tend to be a little bit smaller. So for our purposes, I'm just going to choose the small memory dump option. And then we can also choose the folder that the memory dump gets written to. By default, it's being written to system root mini dump. There's also an option to overwrite any existing files, and you can disable the automatic deletion of memory dumps when disk space is low. But these are the primary options that you need to configure in preparation for analyzing a crash dump file. 